At the end of the 70s, a new wave of British bands injected some much needed energy in the world of metal. Welcome everyone to the channel. My name is Jasper and we're gonna talk about the new wave of British heavy metal. So except for a handful of successful bands like Motorhead, ACDC, The Scorpions, and Judas Priest, by the end of the 70s, heavy metal was going through a bad time. Black Sabbath was all over the place and they fired Ozzy. Deep Purple had already disbanded. And in 1980, Led Zeppelin also called it quits after John Bonham died. Hard rock was becoming very mainstream and losing its edge. And to make things worse for new bands, record companies were only really interested in signing new punk bands. As a direct reaction to these trends, a new generation of mostly British metalheads started to play fast songs filled with guitar harmonies and solos while completely dropping the blues influences that bands like Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin had used so much. As the punk rage declined as fast as it gained popularity, these new bands were getting quite a bit of following in the underground. But because their music and their image was not very fashionable at the time, they were having a hard time being signed by record companies. Iron Maiden's Dave Murray recalled in a recent interview that they were told by record labels that they would get signed if only they would get a haircut and dyed their hair purple. Now luckily the new scene did get some level of support, particularly by Sounds Magazine editor Alan Lewis, and he's the one who called this generation of bands the new wave of British heavy metal. There was also radio DJ Neil Kay who started to play the demo tapes of these bands on air. Now from a pure musical perspective, is the new wave of British heavy metal or the Nwabam as it's being called now really a genre? And not so much, although there's a couple of things that do stand out. A lot of the band's sound is carried by these galloping riffs, twin guitar harmonies. But what characterized these bands so much is the pure energy that really explodes from these records. Even if a lot of them were poorly produced, sometimes self-produced. Over time, the scene that was spearheaded by Iron Maiden would become the most influential in the world of metal. Now, to be fair, I will actually include a couple of bands that are not even British, but bands from other countries that were playing similar music at the same time. Now, the Nuwabam would go on to influence metal for decades, and most notably thrash metal, speed metal, power metal. So in the countdown, we are going to talk about the scene's biggest classics, but also some more obscure songs. So, the essential new wave of British heavy metal, let's count them down. So if you want to start a Nwabam playlist in an epic way, there's really only one song that I think can be the start, even if it's a glorified instrumental intro. Iron Maiden with the Ides of March. <laughs> Sometimes there's a band that will forever be known for one particular song. In some cases, that song is also the name of the breakthrough album. And in the case of this band, that name is also the name of the band. Obviously, I'm talking about Angel Witch with Angel Witch. Number three, a fantastic song by Praying Mantis, Panic in the Streets. At number four, one of those bands from outside of Britain, from Denmark, Randy with the Beast. And yes, I know this previous song came out in 1986, which is pretty late for the Nwabam era, which is usually defined as 1979 to 1981, 82. But I just felt that this song is just such a great track and it very much captures the vibe of the early Nwabam, so I had to include it. Most metalheads know that Bruce Dickinson, who became the most famous singer of Iron Maiden, was in a band called Samson before Iron Maiden. So at number five, we've got Samsung with a cover, Riding with the Angels. At number six, a Nwabam band that definitely influenced thrash metal, um, Satan with 
trial by fire. At number seven, another massive band to come out of the Nwabim era, Saxon with And the Band Played On. It's pretty well known fact that Metallica were massive Nwabim fans when they were young. And this has resulted in Metallica covering a number of Nwabim songs. And it's because of these covers that several songs became popular again. A great example of this is Killing Time by Sweet Savage. The fact that Metallica covered this song has completely given Sweet Savage a career again. And a lot of people know their songs just because Metallica covered them. At number 9, one of those underground classics that really became popular again in recent years, Trader's Gate, that the devil takes the high road. Number 10, one of those bands that is pretty known but definitely didn't reach the same heights as Iron Maiden, but one of my favorite bands of the genre, uh, Tigers of Pantang, with Running Out of Time. We're running out of time, destroying all that's been built. At number 11, my absolute favorite song of the entire Wobbum. Again, came out a little bit later, 1985, and this band really only released one single and then some demos. For me, just really captures the Nwabin spirit and its virtue with the stand to fight. <laughs> From the underground back to the big bands, at number 12, Iron Maiden. At number 13, we go back to one of those bands that really only released a couple of songs, but one of those songs, which was a B-side initially, became this classic weapon with set the stage alight. So I already referenced Metallica covering Wobbum classics before. This is another one of those examples of Metallica covering a song, making that song more popular than it ever had been before. At number 14, we've got Blitzkrieg with Blitzkrieg. Another band that became pretty popular, mellowed out over the years a little bit. I'm a big fan of their early work. Uh, I was very excited to see the band play live at one of their reunion tours, uh, maybe 15 years ago now. This band is Demon with Into the Nightmare. Okay, so for a final time, we're gonna go back to Metallica covering songs. If there is one band that Metallica, and particularly Lars Ulrich, will talk about over and over again about being the ultimate influence on Metallica, it has got to be Diamond Head. Maybe I was 15 years old when on a school trip to London, I picked up this, you know, greatest hits album from Diamond Head out of the budget bin of the store. I still love that greatest hits album. I play it a lot still. After their first releases, there were some really high expectations. People were calling them the new Led Zeppelin. That didn't happen. Over the years, the band kind of fell apart. Unfortunately, the founding members Sean Harris and Brian Tatler have not worked together since the early 2000s. So that has resulted in Diamond Head continuing on without singer Sean Harris. Nevertheless, I was lucky enough to see the band play in Toronto and a very small club a few years ago. It was the first time I got to see Diamond Head live and it was just one of those fantastic shows for me where even if there was only maybe a hundred people in this tiny little venue, you know, 
everybody there knew every word of every song. It was just great. Anyway, back to the countdown at number 16 of Diamond Head, Helpless. At number 17, another one of those songs that really became a classic. I find that this is a song that a lot of metalheads know without really knowing. People might not realize they know this band when you ask them about it, but if you hear the song, everybody can just sing along. Maybe it's just such a catchy song that you only have to hear it once to sing along, but it's this great anthem. This is Grim Reaper with See You in Hell. This list would not be complete without the all-female band Girl School. So on number 18, we've got Race with the Devil. Right, at number 19, a very special song for me. Again, we go with a band that is not British, but actually Belgian. This song is definitely one of the biggest metal classics from Belgium. One of the big three of 80s Belgian metal. This band is called Ostrogoth. This is the title track from their 1983 EP, which is just phenomenal. There's four tracks on this EP and all four of them are fantastic. But the title track is really the ultimate classic. This is the Full Moon's Eyes. And finally, we come to number 20, which will be the last song from this countdown. So we started with an epic intro by Iron Maiden. And so we'll be closing this up with an epic song again by Iron Maiden. When you go back to those first two albums with Paul Diano on vocals, what is really the most epic song on those? Well, I think every Maiden fan will agree that if you need a true big song to end the playlist with, that can only be the Phantom of the Opera. Alright, so those were my picks for the essential countdown of new wave of British heavy metal. What songs were you expecting? Let me know in the comments. I'll definitely check out songs that I don't know. I do hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon for another countdown. Thank you for watching this video. Click right here to watch more videos like this and subscribe to the channel.